Prayer to prayer. I don't know if anyone has a specific, something we can pray with it for you about specifically. Let's pray for the Long family, if we would. Um, they had a, a fire, I guess it was Friday night, uh, in their house, and um, really in the garage, and it, it burnt their Tahoe to just bare metal, and um, and, and uh, but the family got out; they were they were safe. But uh, there's a lot of emotions that go into that, and a lot of figuring out of life when you have a family of three and and the baby on the way, and all of that. So we're very thankful they're safe. But uh, pray for the Long family uh, for sure. We'll do that this morning, and probably in the morning service also. Anyone else? Anything quickly we can pray with you about, Miss Donna? Okay, Betty, uh, Betty, Miss Betty has pneumonia. Pray for her. Uh, Brad? So Amy and Ella are in, flew into Anaheim, California. They'll come back in nine days, something like that. All right, I'll be praying for them. Okay. All right, let's pray together if you would. Father, we are thankful for a beautiful day, the opportunity to come and gather with church family and open our Bibles and sing songs and um, worship you together. We just pray that you would bless our time and certainly other Christians around the world who are meeting together uh, with us. We do pray that you just uh, bless this class and the young people as they learn your word and continue through the busyness of summer that you'll keep them safe and lead them as you do all of us. We do pray for, um, we pray for Miss Amy and Ella as they travel, that they'd have a good time together, keep them safe. Uh, we pray for Miss Betty who has pneumonia and we're just thankful for her faithfulness and her love for you and her love for others in our church and just uh, her story and uh, battling pneumonia and we, our prayers, just give her strength, let this uh, pneumonia get, uh, get uh, healed and uh, that she can continue to join us for services, but uh, we just pray that you be with her and her family. And then we pray for the Long family as well. First of all, we're, we're just thankful. We're thankful that their family is safe when it, it could be very different and uh, just some physical damage there. But we pray that your presence would be with them, and give them wisdom as they make some decisions about what the next steps are, figuring this out, just as a family that they'd uh, maybe be, be close and uh, know your comfort and peace uh, now and in the future. We just pray that you'd be with them in a special way. Bless our class together, the morning the service and, and this evening the youth service as well as the young people are preparing and uh, will uh, we'll preach and lead singing and uh, usher and just all of the different ways that they're, they're learning to, to serve and, uh, and will be leading these things um, as they grow. We just pray that you work in their hearts as well as everyone who's a part of it. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, well, um, I am going to, uh, if I could get uh, a couple volunteers, uh, a couple of men to help me hand out uh, a couple things. Uh, so if you would like one, um, there are probably enough for each. If not, we can decide, we can, we can share. And, um, but one per person is probably about right. But what we're going to do to start with is uh, part of being a good student, right? Uh, call this Sunday school is asking good questions, asking good questions. So I'd like to try something. Um, I'd like to, uh, to see if we could get maybe three volunteers, three volunteers, and we're going to encourage some participation in good question answering. So um, how about we do this? Can we get a volunteer from the young adults who doesn't mind coming up and helping answer some questions about some Bible characters. Uh, a, a volunteer from the Center Point and a volunteer from the Wiser Society. So we sort of have three groups here, and um, I wonder if, if you would all uh, find someone, uh, a volunteer among yourselves. And here's how the game's going to go. It's not, you don't have to be scared. We all love you, and, um, and uh, this is going to be fun. So I have in here um, a list of uh, maybe about 20 different Bible characters. So these are fairly well-known Bible characters in the Bible. 
And uh, you're going to try to ask questions to see if you can figure out who the Bible character is. So do we have any volunteers from the young adults, someone who'd be willing to volunteer? There's other ways we can go about this, but I... I... <laughs> Brother Rob, will, will you be Wiser Society? All right. Very good. We have a brave volunteer. Excellent. Uh, how about Center Point? How about Center Point? Someone feeling courageous and adventurous. Brother Rob, you can come up here. It'll be just a minute. Well, we might start with you, but because uh, you volunteered first. Um, yeah, I did have a stool here a bit ago. Does anyone know where the stool went? It's back there? Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind, if you could grab that. All right, center point. Anyone yet? Anyone? All right, whose birthday is closest to today? Can we do that? Is it Billy's? Are you up for a challenge? All right, Billy is going to be the champion. Give him a hand. Woo! For center point. All right, now I need a young adult. A young adult. So, I can put a champion. Matthew? Matthew's going to try? All right, we got all guys today. All right, Matthew. All right. Very good. Okay, here's how the game's going to go. Here, or here's how we're going to do this, all right? You can call this 20 questions, or you can call this uh, who am I, but um, we'll start with Brother Rob, and I'll explain how this is going to go. You can come sit up here. I'm actually going to give you a microphone. A dunce cap? No, I don't, actually. We'll do microphone number two. All right. These are Bible characters, all right? I'm not going to give you any more specificity than that, but they're Bible characters that you probably have heard of before if you've been to Sunday school very long at all. And Brother Rob is going to pick one, but he's not going to tell anyone what it is. Except me. Except me. All right. All right. That's a good one. All right. So... He is now going to become this Bible character, and uh, he's going to answer questions from all of you. We'll do, uh, we'll do the Wiser Society. Those are 50, right? 50 and older. Is that what it is? 50 and older, and then uh, 30 to 50, and then under that, all right? There's three different groups, and we're going to see who's good at asking questions. And so I'll take a question from each group, and you can ask a yes or no question. You can say yes, no, or I don't know about who he is, so you're gonna, you might say, are you from the Old Testament, and he'll say yes or no, or I don't know. We're going to narrow it down, right? Yeah, we're going to narrow it down, and if you know, if you think you know who it is, that's how you win, and that can be your question at any point, but you have to take turns, so you're going to raise your hand, but we'll go group at a group, and we'll see which group is better, better Bible students, all right? This is how this works, all right? So there you go, Brother, brother Rob. And let's start with a question from the Wiser Society. So anyone 50 and older, Wiser Society, can start with your question. Is Emily? Are you male? Yes. Question is, are you male? He's a male. All right, center point. Are you BJ? Are you in the Old Testament? Yes. He's in the Old Testament. He's male. Uh, young adults. Somewhat. That wasn't one of the options for answers, but I like it. All right, we'll go back to the Wiser Society. Brother Jeff? Is there a book of the Bible named after you? No. Good question. Is there a book of the Bible named after you? No. Center point? No. He wasn't a king. Good question. Young adults. No. He doesn't have a coat of many colors. All right, very good. We're narrowing it down. It's not Joseph. All right. Uh, Wiser Society? All of... You can always take a guess, but that acts as your question. Pardon? 
Are you Moses? No. He is not Moses. Y'all close, but... That was Wiser Society. So we have to go to center point. We'll come get you next. Center point. That means 30 to 50. Kaylin? Did you have a lot of sons? Pardon? Mm. Did you have a lot of sons? Uh, yes. That's a tricky question. Yeah, because that... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We, that was one question, so now we got to go to young adults, <laughs> young adults, young adults. No. He's not Jacob. All right, go back to Ron Shepard. Did you lose everything and then gain everything? Uh, no. I know where you're headed with that. Center point? Yes. Abraham, yes, very good. Brother Rob fits that, that, that very well as well. So very good. Now that you know how this goes, uh, center point is, uh, is ahead. They have one point. Now if center point gets the next one, you automatically win. We don't even get a chance. But All right, Billy, are you up for this? It's not a hard job. You have to say yes, no, or I don't know. This should be fun. All right, center point one last time, so we'll go ahead and go with young adults, young adults. The point of the game, one more time, is you're, you're practicing asking good questions, Bible questions, and so he's a character in the Bible, that's all you know, a more well-known one, and we'll ask questions to whittle it down. We restart here with the young adults, young adults. Are you from the Old Testament? Yes. Yes, very good. Good question. Uh, now we're jumping back up to wiser society. Wiser society. Old Testament, wiser society. Melanie? No. She asked, are you a male? And he said, no, that is a tough one. People might wonder if they don't know how this, game, this all works out. All right, Old Testament, not a male. Uh, where are we? Center point? No. Good guess. Um, we're back to young adults. Young adults. Matthew? No. You're very specific. You're very specific, yeah. I feel like if you answered it correct, it would... all right, back to wiser society. Yes, Patty? Were um, you a judge? No. Um, center point? PJ? The story, the story has a lot to do with a family member, yes. Um, young adult. Young adults. Asking good questions. Heidi can be in the young adults, yes. No. He is not Eve. All right, why is there society? Yes. Ah, oh, very good. He was Sarah, the matriarch. Uh, so, so far we got Abraham and Sarah. These have been very narrow. Our right, last chance. So, Wiser Society got one. Center Point got one. This is our chance, young adults, to redeem ourselves. Matthew is on the hot seat. You can't have a multiple personality. All right. There you go. So, uh, Wiser Society pulled that off, so now it's young, uh, center point. Center point gets to, uh, gets to ask the first question, center point. No. Not from the New Testament. Good question. Um, young adults. Yes. He is a man. He is a man, and he is not from the New Testament. All right. Um, uh, uh, wiser society. Brad. Did you build anything? No. Probably, but it's not very prominent in Scripture. Uh, 
uh, we, we're back to center point. Center point? No. no. Not a disciple. Young adult. No. Not a king. Not a king. Not New Testament. Male. Back to Wiseman Society. Yes. No. Not one of the books is not named after him. One of the books of the Bible is not named after him. Um, good questions. Good question. Center point. Wiser Society has one. Center point has one. This is our chance. You can't be center point and young adult. <laughs> good try, though. <laughs> You got to pick one side and go there. Any other center point? Center point? 30 years old to 50. This is where a lot of life happens right here. Yes. I don't think you did. No, I did. No, you did. Um, what you did? We have to confer for just a second. <laughs> Go ahead and answer that again. Yeah, that, no, you did. Sorry. He, he did not have more than one wife. We will research this a little bit later, but he did not have more than one wife is what we're going with right now. Um, that was center point, so now we go down to young adults. Young adults, come on. This is our last chance. Yes. He was a good character in the Bible. Good question. Back to wiser society. Would it be a very strong person? No, not necessarily. All right, center point. <laughs> Narrowing down questions is what we want here. General enough to help us, but specific enough to help us narrow down. These are good these are good activities for long car trips if you're traveling this summer. Where are we, center point? Yep. No. Not a king. This one's a hard one. Yes. He's within the four, first four books of the Bible. I like that line of questioning. That's good. Uh, wiser society. I don't think so. No. <laughs> um, center point. Joe? Jacob? No. Not Jacob? Close. Young adults? Close is not one of the answers. No. I don't think so. Um, good question. Back to Wiser Society. There were a couple of hands here earlier. Melanie? Yes. Oh, she asked, did your father try to sacrifice you? And she said, yes. But we're back to center point. Center point. Are right. you, right, Isaac? Very good. <laughs> you set it up for center point. Center point wins. Good job. Uh, You all are good at asking questions, and uh, I leave for a family uh, reunion trip tomorrow, so stop by tomorrow and ask for your donut, and we'll go from there. All right, very good. Well, that was fun. Um, I, just because this is a unique uh, Sunday uh, with the classes combined and uh, and you are all studying different things. 
I thought we would just continue and wrap up what we've been talking about in our young adult class, and that is navigating life. And so we talked about uh, making good decisions as we go through life and what it means to make good decisions biblically. And then most recently, we've been talking about managing money uh, biblically. And uh, so we've been having some discussion about finances and how to think about um, how to manage uh, the stuff God has given us to steward in our lives. You see there that there are two verses at the top if you have that sheet. The first is Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9 and 10, which says that we are to honor the Lord with thy substance. So who you are and what you have, uh, all of it together, we're supposed to honor the Lord with it, His purposes and plans and understanding that it ultimately all belongs to Him and with the first fruits of all thine increase. And so as we grow and as God prospers, we return back to Him. We honor Him with the first fruits of thine increase. And then, of course, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. And so wisdom all the way back from Proverbs, that we should honor the Lord with the things He's given us and, and uh, trusting in His provision. Now, Proverbs 14, verse 23, talks about how oftentimes... Uh, the stuff that we have, it requires us taking care of it and laboring for it. It says, in all labor, there is profit. We know there's some things that we can do that, that maybe aren't profitable, but the idea that we put our, our lives into something to create it or to make it better or to work hard, in all labor, there's profit. But just to talk, the talk of the lips only tendeth to purity and uh, penury. And so just talking about things or thinking about things uh, doesn't, doesn't weed the garden, just talking about planting, doesn't plant the soil, just talking about serving doesn't mean that, that the ministries are, are filled. And so uh, putting, putting your life and heart into something is connected with how we manage the things and resources God gives us. I'm going to go through just a few things that uh, we were talking about in our class, and then I would like you to participate with me, if you would, in just the minutes that remain on the discussion questions. So we'll get to these in a moment. Um, but these are some questions that you can look at, and I would love, just some of you are older, you've lived longer, and maybe you have a little bit of advice you could, or, or insight from a biblical perspective, or even just a biblical but practical perspective in life, how to think about some of these things. Um, a few things that we were talking about that I'll just do in terms of review and just to mention is that uh, as we think about the Scripture and we think about how we're supposed to care for the resources God has given to us, it's important for us to pay our bills. We have obligations that we will incur as a person going through life, and we go through life with others in an, in a, in a, in an environment around us. And we're supposed to, as Christians, have a good reputation to the degree we're able to uh, with our neighbors, with our, uh, the people we do business with. In, um, and so uh, as we think about this, we should try to have a lifestyle, live a lifestyle that we can afford. We should try to live in such a way where we can uh, live within our means. And uh, we're reminded that there are those who, as they go through life, are very much after the pursuit of money or potentially even the, the acclaim that, that pleasures can give or that people might give in terms of attention of, of what we have. And it's okay to have nice things and to and to, and to put your labor into many different things, but we want to avoid what 1 Timothy 6 says, where it says, that the love of money is the root of all evil. While some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It is possible, isn't it, for us to be consumed with pursuing earthly things, to get so caught up in it that we get off track, and maybe we let go of the things that are more important, honoring the Lord caring and loving our family, um, and, and being honest with the, in the relationships that we have. We're reminded that money is a tool to use for God. It's, it's, a, it's a great resource that God has given us to be able to do much good in the world and provide for our families. Um, and um, the Bible talks about how we can uh, have pity on the poor. It says that he that hath pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he repay again. Uh, Ecclesiastes 11 says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. And so it's a tool, it's a resource, it's something that we can use in life. Money is oftentimes a, a compass, a thermometer, a reference for our affections. How, what are our affections on? Are they things on this earth? Or, or how do we 
use the resources that we have? Do they reflect someone who is honoring the Lord, who loves the Lord? Or do they reflect someone whose affections are things on this earth, or we're laying up for ourselves treasures on this earth where they're going to disappear and aren't rich toward God in the things that are in heaven? So it's a reference for our affections in terms of how, we, uh, how we're trusting in the Lord. Um, we're supposed to pay our laborers. And uh, the Old Testament speaks about this, and even James talks about this in James chapter 5 and verse 4. Behold, the hire of the laborers who've reaped down your fields, which of you have kept back by fraud, crieth. Proverbs tells how important it is to be honest. If you're a businessman and you sell flour, you know you have the scales, right? Kroger has those, uh, Walmart has those in the, in the banana aisle, right? So you can weigh your produce and we, hopefully, I, I, I tend to trust the weight, right? You go to the self-checkout stand and it weighs your bananas and I guess they trust that it's actually bananas and I trust that their scale works. And uh, it's important as Christians to be, to be honest in how we engage w- with, with others and uh, we pay our bills. Uh, we, we're careful how we, how we ask others for help. Um, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, Paul writes to the church, there were some who, who were maybe relying on others and they weren't, they weren't contributing, they weren't willing to contribute on their own. And so he writes to them, he says, even when we were with you, we commanded that if any would not work, neither shall he eat or neither should he eat. And you notice it's a would not work. People get themselves into trouble and life happens, but if there's someone who will not work, hunger is a really powerful motivator. Would you agree? If you have any kids, sometimes that can play into things. And, um, and so, um, if any would not work, but yet we should honor widows that are widows indeed. And he talks about how the responsibility of a family to care for their own, and, and, uh, but there may be some opportunity to, to step in and help those who are truly in a difficult position without family. Uh, We should be careful in borrowing money. Uh, The Bible says, the rich ruleth over the poor, the borrower is servant to the lender. And if we get caught up in consumer debt, it it, it means we have all of these obligations and ties to different things, and it's difficult to make decisions independently after a while. It's difficult to make decisions that, that, that we would like to potentially make as a family if I'm tied down to all of these obligations and weighed down that way. And so we should have a, a financial plan to plan our purchases, uh, a budget, some sort of spending plan. Um, Luke 14 talks about, hey, if you're going to build a tower, wouldn't you all sit down first and count the cost and whether you have enough to build it? And so as we live our life, it's important to put some thought into how we're living it. You know, it's one thing when you have the opportunity to give somebody uh, some money to help them with something, there's, but, but if you haven't budgeted and you have bills that you aren't paying somewhere else, then you're kind of doing what? The rob Peter to pay Paul. You, are you familiar with that expression? And, um, and, and if we aren't thoughtful about our giving, then we're not truly being generous. Maybe we're just being... We're being uh, less than careful with our money because we don't know what we have to give. And we may be robbing Peter to pay Paul. And so being intentional, including intentional about our giving and and being generous. Uh, The Bible talks about uh, not being surety, surety. Well, what does surety mean? If you have your Bibles, turn there just quickly to Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 15. And a lot of these come from Proverbs, a lot of the thoughts about how to wisely steward our lives and our resources come from Proverbs. Um, but Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 15 says, He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth suretyship is sure. Now, that doesn't mean that you're smart to provide surety for a stranger. But you can imagine at this time in the economic system of that day that if you were to assume responsibility for someone else's debt and that person didn't come through to pay their debt and you're the one who signed for it, now you're in a really, really tough spot. Financial situations can sometimes make relationships very difficult, but here you're responsible for someone else's obligations You've taken their responsibility for their life, and now you're going to smart for it. You're going to hurt, right? Like when, you, when uh, someone 
I don't know what a good definition of smart is, but uh, um, if, uh, if you ever get, the thing that comes to my mind is hitting your head, you know, on, a, on something metal and sharp, your, heart's, your head's going to smart for a little while, it's going to hurt. And, uh, and, and so being careful to take other people's obligations to do so wisely, to do that for a, a stranger, someone you don't know, um, is, is to take quite, quite a bit of a risk. And so uh, surety, things like uh, uh, co-signing loans, these sorts of things. Um, the importance of saving in, in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20, it says, there's treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. And so someone who's wise is going to um, probably understand that there are emergencies and there are difficult things, unexpected things that happen in one's life. And so thinking ahead and having some sort of wise uh, reserve is, is, is an intelligent, wise thing to do, uh, an emergency fund, and, and, uh, and being thoughtful about saving ahead for those times. And the uh, example I've heard of this is it's sort of like when you're on the freeway on I-70 headed off to uh, a distant place, and uh, some drivers love to follow the car in front of them with about four feet of distance. They just like to be right there. I guess it's because they think they're going to get there faster or because they think that uh, they're going to, you know, the, the wind drag force, they're physics, they're physics majors and they understand their gas mileage will go down if they draft the car in front of them. But isn't it more relaxing when you're driving with someone who has that four seconds, right, of, of following distance? Because when something happens, right, when a tire comes off the truck or there's a deer that runs across the road, there's room and margin to think and, and act instead of having to uh, react so much. And so savings can be like that, providing some margin. It's important, the Bible is very clear that we shouldn't be covetous. We shouldn't be covetous. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Not looking at what other people have, that you're not maybe in a place to have and feeling like, I've got to have that. And, um, and being careful, one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house or, or wife or, or animals or possessions. Another thought here is we shouldn't despise, we shouldn't despise the two mites. We shouldn't despise the poor, those who may not have what I, I have. And sometimes we can make all sorts of assumptions about the guy who looks like he's rich that may or may not be true. And we can make all sorts of assumptions about someone who may or may not be wealthy that may or may not be true. And Jesus mentioned this to the disciples when they saw a certain poor widow giving, and there were others who gave a lot, and she just gave in a couple, a few pennies. And Jesus said, really, she's given more than all of them because this was all she had. And for her to give was, was a very meaningful thing to her and from the heart, and that means more to heaven than than, than all the, the wealthier people who gave much more and maybe didn't have the heart and, and it didn't have as much meaning to them. James 2 reminds us that we shouldn't have the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ go through this life with the Christian faith and, and make too many judgments about someone in goodly apparel and, and doing well and we treat them with lots of respect and then we, we neglect the one who, who comes in in rags and and it doesn't smell as good and doesn't look as good, but we should show love. They're in the image of God. They need the gospel. If they're a Christian, they're as much of a child of God as anyone, and we should show them that respect. Um, one more is that we should re realize that it all belongs to the Lord. It all belongs to God. In Proverbs chapter 50 and verse 9, well, cha Pro Psalm chapter 50, I won't read it all, but he says, um, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, the fullness thereof. He said, um, every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. And so God owns it all. And uh, as we worship him, he works with us and, and he's watchful and he, he provides and he does have a plan for us financially. Well, let's help. Help me if you would, please. Let's have a quick conversation just in the few minutes we have left. Um, and I, I'd just be interested to hear your, your perspective uh, from a biblical perspective. Let's talk about this. Um, what are some practical ways to live within our means? What are some practical ways to live within our means? As you've gone through life, has God given you any wisdom, either through experience or through conversation? Uh, some perspective on that. Greg? Pay your credit card ever, off every month. Okay, so there's an opportunity. In fact, the credit card companies, they're kind of happy for you, aren't they, to, 
to, to not pay it off and to pay them extra interest, and that's how they make a lot of their money. So, so be in a habit of paying, paying those things off every month. Good. Anyone else? Dennis? Yeah. Yeah, so a difference between what I what I need, what are kind of core to to life and what are just wants, making sure that we pay attention to the needs first and then we can do more with with the wants, but making sure we don't get those out of focus. One more? Any more thoughts on that? Living within our means. Very good. Let's move on. How can we ensure we're using money as a tool for God's purposes? So the Bible warns about money and sometimes it getting us off track. And I don't think it's right to say money's bad. It's very useful. It, it, you know, it's the way the world works. We all need food and shelter and things like that. That's how we're good to others. But how can we make sure we're using it as a tool for God's purposes? Okay, so include uh, our, our money and our prayers. So how we talk to the Lord and get and have that conversation with the Lord about it. Good. Uh, yes? So make sure we tithe first instead of what's off of what's left over because oftentimes there isn't anything left over, right? And so being intentional right away on what reminds me and helps me to understand this is all the Lord's and I'm going to worship him first and that fits with that verse we have in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 so tithe first very good what can we uh, how can we ensure we're using money as a tool for God's purposes Okay, so we want to we see a connection between giving and how that's actually the harvest, right? Impacting the kingdom of heaven, impacting um, some sort of result there. And so it is possible to cast pearls before swine is kind of the proverb of that. And so be intentional about our giving. And uh, I know there are some charities and things who maybe are good, and there are some that maybe aren't as helpful. Um, and so just being intentional. And there's obviously so many good things to give to and that's why I think giving through a local church is really helpful because you can see that, that connection. Very good. Um, what steps can we take to avoid impulse buying and plan our purchases wisely? So what can we do? And I don't have any answers here, so I'm really interested to hear your, your thoughts, but uh, just have the question. What steps can we take to avoid impulse buying and plan our purchases wisely? Emily? Yeah, taking the time to be thankful for what we, we have. Um, I think that it's sort of an instinct, isn't it? Maybe for me, for, for us to, to always be looking at what else is out there. And if you take the time to be, appreciate what you have, that, that, that helps give us a wiser perspective on other things. So when you go into a store leave your money locked in the car, and then if you really want it, you have to go all the way back out to the car, unlock it, get it, and go back out. That is really creative. I like that. Um, I guess I've heard of one where you don't go sh food shopping when you're hungry. Is that, has anyone heard that? Um, your cart just looks different when you're starving than when you've, when you've eaten. Uh, that's very good. Anyone else? Ivy? Yeah, there's, yeah, those, that's some good questions to ask yourself before. You see it on sale and there's an impulse to get it, but to, 
to wonder, how much am I actually going to use it? Is, how, how is it going to be useful in my life? Is it going to end up being a burden or take up other costs and, uh, and have to take up space? And Yeah, that's good. Very good. Uh, we might have time for one more. Um, uh, how can we balance the responsibility of saving, right? Paying bills, being wise, with the call to be generous. So how can we balance the, the, the good instinct to save without turning into Ebenezer Scrooge, I guess? Anyone? We want to be generous, but we also know we need to save. Brad? Okay. So write it down or something. Have a budget and a very specific area for giving. How am I going to give? So I'm, I'm going to save and pay bills, but I'm also going to give. That's a neat idea, isn't it? I don't know if you, had, you have that. That's a neat idea, though. This is my giving, my giving budget. Uh, this is what I give uh, every week or every month or, or whatever. And, and I don't know, find opportunities and, of course, uh, tithe and missions and those sorts of things. But budget in being generous. Anyone else? Before we close. All right, well, thank you for. Le- oh, go ahead. So the point you mentioned is tithing can be the, it, for a New Testament Christian, is the, it all belongs to the Lord. So it's a starting point, not the ending point. And what opportunities to be generous. And as the Christian heart is a heart to be generous and to give and to help and encourage. And uh, we can't take anything with us, can we? Uh, when we, when we go. And so we want to lay up treasure in heaven. So being intentional about that, thoughtful. Look, that's, all, that's all good, helpful thoughts. Thank you for participating in a few different ways this morning. Let's pray, and we'll, we'll be dismissed. Father, we are thankful for your word, and we're thankful for your provision. What a beautiful world. It doesn't matter our income. We can enjoy the sunrise and sunset each, uh, each day, uh, the, the clouds in the sky, the changes of the seasons. And we know we do have needs, and so we're thankful for your provision, the ability, if we have good health, to, to work, and a mind to think, and create, and uh, to contribute, and uh, a family that we have to re- provide for on one hand, but that we get to provide for on the other, and then the opportunities to, to save and give. And Lord, help us to follow Christ and this heart to, to give and to live life not frantically, but wisely, thoughtfully, and generously. Pray that you would give us the wisdom just to lead our families in the way you'd lead each of us to do. Uh, we just pray that you bless our day. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen.